Buongiorno, benvenuti in Vinoteca Casa Mia. Ciao Elena. Ciao Kristen. E ciao Costanza, benvenuta. Grazie, ciao Kristen. Ciao. So, uh, as you see, we have a very special guest for today's Vinoteca Casa Mia. This is Costanza Chirivino, and she is joining us from Sicily today. And uh, she's going to tell us all about the amazing Tasca family and uh, the property that we are going to be introducing you to today and the wine. That's right, Ms. Elena, you've got your bottle of Whitaker, Fondazione Whitaker, uh, the Mozia Island and the only wine coming from uh, Mozia, this beautiful Grillo. So... We're going to, uh, again, we're always trying to share with you some uh, wines that you might not be familiar with. So we're going to have Costanza tell us all about it. Thank you very much, Tristan. Thank you for inviting us and for sharing with you this information about uh, our Sicilian Grillo from Moxia. Uh, well, you started talking about the Tasca family. And I think we should start from this point because Tasca dal Merita is my family. And we uh, started based in the center of the Sicilian island. Uh, let's say that the family started in 1830, uh, cultivating mainly wheat in the center, certain center of the region. Uh, and then uh, in the 50 of last year, last century my great grandfather he decided to uh, invest in the wine cultivation in the in the wine production in the vineyards uh, so we started from there we started from the center of the region uh, we started with the uh, local grapes uh, such as Nero Davola that you probably perfectly know uh, such as in Solia, Cataratto and Pericone and then little by little uh, we decided to move from the uh, Regaliali estate, the center of the region, uh, looking for uh, different terroirs. You know that Sicily is a very um, rich region in terms of uh, biodiversity and viticulture uh, is really important for us. And each different part of the region is able to es express something specific in terms of grape and in terms of wine. So this is how we uh, arrived in the area of Mozia. Mozia is a tiny island in front of the Marsala coast of the region. Uh, and you probably know that uh, Marsala was very famous for the Marsala production uh, in the past. Uh, you can see uh, from the screen uh, the 40 hectares island of Mozia, who was a Phoenician island. We're talking about the 8th century before Christ. So there's a very old story uh, in this island. And you can probably see that there still are all the archaeological ruins on the island. Uh, this island uh, is a UNESCO heritage island. There's nothing except these historical ruins and the vineyards. So let's say that this island has been rediscovered by Joseph Whitaker. We're talking about the beginning of la uh, last century. Uh, he was uh, uh, very interested in all the archaeological stuff, so he rediscovered the island of Mozia. And then, uh, after his death, uh, the, the foundation, the Whitaker Foundation, bought the island. But they, of course, they also had these uh, vineyards on the island, uh, but it's an artistical foundation. So they're not uh, uh, usually cultivating uh, the grapes on the island. Right. So they asked it to the Tasca family to take care of these old vineyards that was already on the island. So on these 40 hectares uh, of island, we have uh, almost uh, uh, 12 hectares of uh, vineyards, only Grillo. Uh, and there's these grapes that are growing together with these ruins. And it's really, really, really an amazing place. Thank you so much. That was a great um, introduction to this special place. Both Elena and I have had the wonderful opportunity to visit there. So we're going to show a little fun that we had when we were visiting Mozia. And uh, this is just, you know, to be able to go to this unique place and uh, just, you know, surrounded by the salt mines and to walk through the vineyards and to see the incredible uh, collection of the archaeological um, uh, care for all of these fantastic artifacts from the uh, Phoenician era is just absolutely amazing. 
And this is the only wine that comes from Maltzia. So very, yeah. very special. So these bottles are precious. <laughs> Let's say that together with all the uh, historical and archaeological aspects of the island, that uh, it what makes uh, unique for uh, uh, the world this special place. There's, uh, of course, uh, climatic condition. That it's what it's giving the uh, most special characteristic to the wine that it's coming from Moxia. Uh, you, you saw from the picture uh, how, uh, let's say, flat is the island. So we say it's seven meters above the sea level, but we can even say seven centimeters. I mean, it's really, really an island that it's really, really close to the sea. Uh, and then the soil, it's, uh, it's really sandy. Uh, and then, the, uh, of course, uh, the area, it's really, really windy. And these three characteristics, it's what it's probably uh, making so special, the climatic condition of Moxia. It's funny because now the family has five different estates all around Sicily. And when, let's say, in Marsala it's raining, not a single drop of water is on the air of Mozia. So Mozia has a microclimate condition that it's really separate if compared to the rest of the Sicilian area. That is, it's amazing. It's just, it's an incredible place. So I think what we should do is talk a little bit about what this wine tastes like. And again, always trying to help give you a point of reference. So we think that if you really love the wines, uh, the Sancerre wines, this is going to be a really excellent uh, choice for you. So some of the things that uh, we really love about this wine is um, a little bit of the citrus and the saltiness. Um, the, uh, you can really get uh, some wonderful kind of uh, little grassy notes out of this. What do you think, Elena? Absolutely, you've got that briny quality that really um, th that really harkens to this this complete sort of seaside reality. Different from because Grillo is a grape that grows throughout the island, but but the the Trapani area, the the, the salt flats around Trapani leading into Moxia are very, as Costanza was talking about, very particular microclimate and. And everything around there is sort of about salt, just to give you an idea of, of what we're looking at. You know, this, these are the, the traditional, these are the old salt flats, and those are the, the windmills. And um, we, we think that that Sancerre likening is very apt. The brininess, the minerality, the, the tartness. Not to, not to say that the wine doesn't have flesh in the middle, but, but it really is a, a bracing wine. So... We should talk about food. We should always talk about food. So um, you're gonna um, share with us some things from a special book on Sicilian cuisine. You know, you know, I always like to look at the books too. This is this is one of um, these sort of uh, compilation by province by region. And you know, while it's not as comprehensive of a cookery book as Adaboni's book. This this is nice because it it divides the the subregions of of Sicily and and really you'd need several volumes to talk about Sicilian cuisine which is the original fusion cuisine of Italy because Sicily has been part of uh, myriad empires so you know so many influences it's crazy couscous alla trapanese is a, a, a very typical thing of this area. In fact, we had couscous when we were in Moxia, but the thing that I was really thinking about from our trip, we had this wonderful just sort of buffet lunch, and we had um, something sort of similar to this, a room temperature shrimp dish with capers, which are, of course, another really important crop, mostly coming from the other side of the island, from the Aeolians. But um, you, you have capers all throughout Sicily. And, and uh, far be it for me to talk about Sicilian cooking culture when we have a Sicilian here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you're really right. And you know that capers, I think, will bring us to the saltness of the mozza wine. And going back to the characteristic of the wine, I think we have to go back again to the historical roots, historical roots of this wine. Because Grillo um, comes from a cross of two different kinds of grapes. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind 
kind of rape that has been, let's say, invented uh, crossing Cataratto and Moscato. So it's a, it's a cross of two local grapes from Sicily. And, and the name of Grillo comes from Aridu because Grillo was a grape uh, with just one seed. So from this Sicilian word that comes the name Grillo. And it probably was born in the area of, of Marsala. So it's where they started cultivating the first plants of this grape. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially the area of Mozia is where they replanted, uh, they restarted after Phylloxera with this Grillo. So this is something that uh, it's again saying why the grillo in the era of mozza is growing in a, such a wonderful way. And going back to the food, of course, we can talk, I think, for one of year, maybe, about all the different kind of, of food we can pair with, uh, with our grillo. Um, I love cheese, I have to say. And our region, we produce lots of different kind of sheep cheese. The most famous one is pecorino that for sure you can find like in more fresh version or you have more uh, an aged pecorino uh, but with the fresh pecorino uh, that it's called primo sale in sicily i think you can perfectly pair uh, your grillo di mozia as well and i have a piece here that i will share with you so i thought of uh, something that might not be so traditional but would be a really excellent pairing uh, one of the things I love so much about uh, summers in Chicago is being able to go to the farmer's market. I live in the city, so we have these wonderful farmers that come a couple times a week and bring us their bounty. And right now, we are, we are just practically buried in tomatoes and cucumbers and spring onions. It's fantastic. So I'm going to make a gazpacho, a nice chilled soup, a little bit of jalapeno, lots of fresh basil, uh, gonna do that and then uh, because of the I think the, the weight and richness that this wine could bear I'm gonna put some uh, lump crab meat into that gazpacho make it morto delicioso uh, but if you want to keep it vegetarian uh, vegan just do the gazpacho but I thought the crab would really uh, show off like all of the beautiful layers of this wine so that's what I'm going with so price wise what are we looking at for our Pasca d'Anmerita Fondazione Whitaker Grillo. Not to be confused with the Spanish pronunciation of the double L, which would mm -hmm. be Grillo. That is not how we say it in Italian. Right. You pronounce, pronounce those two all, L's. all the consonants, all the vowels. All right? the L's. <laughs> Especially in Sicily, we pronounce even more. So we are probably somewhere around 20. $25 for this wine, exceptional. Uh, again, something so unique, so special, getting a real uh, you know, introduction to not just Sicily, but Mozia. So uh, this is uh, this beautiful wine. If you wanna learn more about it, you can visit, certainly the Tosca website is fantastic. You can also go to the Dalaterra website, but you don't forget to ask your favorite retailer about these wines. Thank you so much, Costanza, for joining us. Mille grazie, Tara. And, and we wait for you. You know, in a couple of weeks, we will be in the middle of the harvest of our Grillo di Mozia. And you know that the harvest, it's probably the most, most incredible moment that we have every year in every single estate, in every single vineyard, but especially in the Mozia estates, because all our grapes will go on the boats and then with the boats we will pass across uh, this laguna how it's called mm -hmm. and then we will join the mainland to go to the winery so we we will share some picture with you in the future so you can be with us during the harvest of mozia thank you again I can't wait to see yeah. you again non vediamo l'ora tornare in italia ti <laughs> aspettiamo sì, sì. ciao 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 ciao, 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 ciao.